it was a desolate area and looked even more so swept by dirty rain under the leaden sky. Amid the heaps of red brick rubble, a few old houses clung on like obstinate teeth and an empty rotten mouth. Grim shadows in raincoats. It was Chapel Road, Ripper Territory, host of the 81 riots. These words were written by author Peter Robinson in his 1987 novel, Gallows View. His view of Chapel Town, a suburb of the city of Leeds, is representative of how outsiders have historically perceived the town, which is small enough that it is not officially recognised by the land registry or post office. Chapel Town Road, the road Robinson referred to as Ripper Territory, is the main thoroughfare. It is known for the multiplicity of shops and community centres, representing many minority cultures. In 2002, lead sociologist Max Farr authored a book t- entitled The Struggle for Community in a British Multi-Ethnic Inner City Area, chronicling the way in which Chapel Town has traditionally been characterised. As Robinson's quote demonstrates, the area has been viewed somewhat as a ghetto. It is a space for the black other, and it is where they create disturbances, such as the race-related riots for which the town has become well known. The riots, which occurred not only in Chapel Town, but in fact all across Britain throughout the 1970s and 1980s, have led to black and other minority communities being branded as dangerous and ill-suited to assimilate into British culture. The struggle of the Chapel Town community to obtain political agency and to provide educational and career opportunities for its residents have been documented by undergraduate students from Nazareth College. In the years immediately following World War II, there was a labour shortage in Britain. The British Nationality Act of 1948 created the status of citizenship for all residents of the Commonwealth and allowed them free access to resettle in the UK. The Royal Commission on Population reported in 1949 that immigrants of good stock would be welcomed without reserve and potential newcomers from the Caribbean and elsewhere soon became aware of the pressing needs of the labour market in the UK. One such immigrant, a citizen of the Commonwealth from the island of Nevis, was Arthur France. France resettled in Chapeltown, the small suburb of Leeds, in 1957. Well, I came from the small island of Nevis in the British West Indian. Right. And uh, it's like when you as a child growing up, and, you know, it was always told to us that Britain was the mother country and the queens and the whole lot of mm-hmm. things. And so young people, you know, you kind of a, it's like a dream, you know what I mean, uh, talking about England and the queen and so on and so on. And it was like a, a distance dream. And, was uh, then the England was destroyed in the last World War mm-hmm. and there was rebuilding and they needed people to come to England to help rebuild you know, different sections. And it was like, more for me, as a lot of young people, it was like an adventure mm. and you didn't know what to expect. France, like many of his generation, settled in Chapel Town because his sister also lived in the area. Describing his situation, France said England was a disappointment. However, France, an eternal optimist, began to make do with what he had. I'm always interested in organising people and getting things done. Mm-hmm. You know, rather than I'm a strong optimist and I don't like pessimists. Mm-hmm. And uh, so talking with friends, I saw people and encouraged them. And he had a federation of the West Indies, and I don't think he even like it, but we are weird. And uh, when the federation broke up, I was heartbroken mm-hmm. as a very young person. Mm-hmm. And then I thought, we need to form something to bring us as people from the Caribbean together. And, um, Living in a flat with one bed and one chair, France and two friends gathered 27 people together. All were from the Caribbean islands, and most of them had never met one another. They called themselves the United Caribbean Association. Realising that they needed funds, they started planning community dances at Leeds City Hall. The price for renting it was £70, and it was due a full month before the date it was reserved. 
France and his friends raised the money and for the first time experienced success in England. The next issue that France and the association took on was education. Because it came from the Caribbean and we expect the administrators and most of the people we expect the English people were highly educated, very understand and very knowledgeable. Right. So we realized we had we were more knowledgeable than quite a number of them and more educated than some of them. So we took the whole system on. Mm. The issues the association faced with the educational system were many. Poor education among the faculty, poor morale for the students and perhaps most discouraging of all an underlying current of racism against the students of Africa and Caribbean descent. France continued to hold community meetings and encourage parents to speak out against the educational system of Chapel Town. As usual, he encountered problems. For people used to all say, we were creating problems because and we don't even have children, so what, we, what do we know? Right. So we didn't know a lot. And uh, one the same school, Copper Street School in particular, the headmaster was very racist, was well, very ridiculous to the youngsters. And we decided, well, he, he had to go. So what we do, we hijack a church up Chapter Road. <laughs> we wrote to the minister and asked him if he could use his church for a day because he wanted to do some work with the children. Right. So he didn't know what we was planning. So we, he took the kids out of school one day and carried them there. And the uh, city council got the message that the kids are not coming back to school as long as we said master is in charge. And by the afternoon, the headmaster was gone. Finding community movements and social engagements to be an effective means of protest, the association continued to insist throughout Margaret Thatcher's administration that the black communities in England would not be treated as less than equal. One obvious means of racial and cultural separation were the IQ tests. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, IQ tests were administered to children of all ages to determine the level of education they would receive. France and the association noticed that the tests relied heavily on cultural norms that English-born children would know, but not those raised in the Caribbean or by Caribbean parents. Frequently, those children would fail the IQ test and would be labelled devastatingly educationally subnormal. France and the association responded by setting up an institute of technology in the early 1980s. Most youths passed the six-week course in only three weeks. The success led to £100,000 in grant money from the government and a visit from Prince Charles. For all his success in reforming Chapel Town's educational system, however, France is perhaps best known for his founding of the West Indian Carnival, a celebration throughout the streets of Leeds in the style of those back home in Nevis. I remember as a little child, little boy, uh, in the village, the carnival was coming up the street road and holding out to my mother, just going on the road and looking at them and laughing. And on that day, from that from that day, I could still see the the the, the group coming up and the costumes and the music and mm. the drama. And I was taking them to cloud nine with mm -hmm. that. I never get it out of my mind. Mm -hmm. In the first year, fifteen thousand people attended the carnival, coming from as far away as Birmingham, Manchester, and even London. In 2016, over 150,000 people attended. What it takes to put on something like carnival? You need the police, you need the city. Mm. And on my own, I went and I sought all of these out. And they didn't know that. I was sorting mm. this out. So I went and the police and sent an inspector who was responsible for the carnival. And he and I, such on a good note, mm. and very supportive of the city. We, you know, the, I'm a very enthusiastic person, and so mm -hmm. it's all of them, yeah, and just, just along with support. Yeah. Although France continued to work diligently throughout the 1980s and 1990s for racial equality, soon he was joined by other crusaders. 
in the 1980s, a second generation took up the mantle and began using different avenues for change. Academia. Dr. Carl Hilton came to Leeds while France was beginning his career as an activist. Like many others, he started out in carpentry and participated in the workers' unions in order to ensure that he and his colleagues were treated fairly by their employers. So when I came to Leeds, I wanted to do research. Mm -hmm. That was some of the key things, but linked into my community mm -hmm. and found that uh, I, 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 I was kept at the lower level and blocked. So I had to, I had to say, OK, what am I gonna, what, what's, what's going to happen? Is, am I going to stop there? Mm -hmm. No, I'm not going to stop there. I've got to find a way around that and over that mm -hmm. and to be able to achieve. When asked about the challenges inherent in organising the black community in Chapel Town, he cited the fact that the generational divide between the immigrants and their children added many complications. It's, it's trying to um, um, link um, the struggles from the past and link um, people f within my age group um, to, to those young people and, and be able to pass on our knowledge and our skills and expertise. Sometimes the young people are organised separately from us, mm. in a sense. Mm -hmm. There are good young people around, and sometimes it's difficult to make contact with them. Mm. Hilton also found that black women often fared better than black men in the 80s and 90s, often because women were not seen as threatening. Meanwhile, pervasive stereotypes about black men slowed the rate at which they were hired in the community. White society would support black women, um, um, and they would get they would get um, um, white collar jobs and, 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 and be promoted and so forth. And, and then you could actually tick off the fact that you had you had a you had a diverse workforce, mm -hmm. and you could reject the men. Mm. You could reject the men, mm. and that's what that's. Those are the key things that was happening at that time. And then... These findings, published in his work, Black Families in Britain, were not simply meant for those in the ivory tower. Dr Hilton determined in 1997 and 98 that he would hold a forum for black men to discuss the issues which were specific for them. More than 100 men attended each forum and discussed ways in which they could better use their community resources, to provide opportunities for professional development and career searching. The newest generation in Chapel Town is, of course, the furthest removed from its Caribbean roots. Arthur France chose to use the United Caribbean Association and the Carnival to raise cultural sensitivity and build cultural unity. Today, Thespian and public historian Joe Williams has found another way. He currently gives tours of the area to connect young people with their cultural heritage. In New York, they recently discovered um, uh, what they call the bangled lady hmm. of African origin. But uh, a wonderful metaphor is that she was discovered with uh, bangles on her hand, why they called her the bangled lady, made of ivory, uh, which were white, uh, of course, and um, ebony, mm. jet ebony, which was local, which mm. was from Whitby here in Yorkshire. So you got Whitby jet, right, and African ivory, and and from two thousand years ago. And, and as a metaphor, if we want to work together, that's that's a, a great metaphor to explore. So there's there's more when you look at the humanistic side rather mm. than just the degradation. Mm -hmm. If we focus just on the degradation then we will have narratives of degradation and um, sim you know, for sympathy right. only. Right. And there's more to the human status than uh, just um, pity. Sure. We need to... Joe Williams has noted that the black community is often forgotten about in history. For instance, many people do not consider that there were blacks living in London in the 17th century. You know, not many people are aware that there were black people in the 17th century, mm -hmm. in, in Shakespeare's 16th century mm -hmm. uh, London, 16th and 17th century London, that there were, there were black people um, functioning in society. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's a myth, and it's the myth of exclusion mm -hmm. which contributes to ongoing exclusion. Right. 
So for me, to challenge that myth will hopefully enhance inclusion mm. today. Mm -hmm. Through history and theatre, Joe has been able to tell the stories of black minorities and include them in the British narrative. Um, disgracefully, uh, in a recent survey, Yorkshire was ranked one of the lowest in the country for diversity mm. in its theatres. But it's through theatre as a whole where if you have an invisible narrative, it's very difficult to tell your story. Mm -hmm. So therefore, it's very difficult to feel a part mm. of that yes. uh, environment, right. th theatre. So it's not just challenging society with theatre. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it's actually challenging theatre itself. And theatre being one of the major liberal arts, mm. um, don't feel that they need to be challenged because they're already liberal. So mm -hmm. therefore... Um, don't need to be challenged. Mm -hmm. These three men, France, Hilton and Williams, each found unique ways to connect black members of the community with one another and with resources. Too often Chapel Town has been painted as a bad area, crime ridden and laden with welfare recipients. The reality is far from the myth. Chapel Town citizens have proven over the course of three generations that they value education, employment and most importantly each other. Its residents are not victims or outcasts. They are entrepreneurs, advocates and counsellors. They are thespians, dancers and artists. They have taken ownership of their history and their culture and made Chapel Town their home.